Hey boys and girls, hope you guys are doing well. So today what we're going to go over is two new types of forces, okay? So we've gone over a few forces so far, all right? So let's talk about what a force is again real quick, because you guys might have forgot. A force is going to be any push or pull on an object, okay? So we, that's a really easy thing to remember, a push or a pull. You do a lot of pushing and pulling through the day, right? Pull your shoestrings, you push your pencil up and down, you pull the door open or closed. There's a lot of pushing and pulling. Most of the time, things are in a constant state of inertia, right? I mean, and most of the time, the state of inertia they're in is at rest. Most things are very lazy on earth just like we've spoken about before, just like the Eureka video prefaced as well. Things don't move unless a force is applied to them. Now, there are some things that do move all the time, such as the rotation of the earth. You know, it's always moving, so it is in a constant state of inertia too. Hopefully nothing will ever slow that down and make it stop, because if it does, we could probably have a little bit of trouble. Now, that we're talking about these forces, one of the first forces we talked about was friction, okay? And we know that friction, main job is to slow objects down. Friction works because of two things rubbing together, okay? One thing is going one way, one thing is going the other, all right? Friction does two things to objects. We've already spoken about this. It slows them down. So friction is the big one that slows objects down. And the other one it does is that it heats things up. So I don't know how many of your parents are carpenters or anything, but if you take a drill and you take a screw and you screw it into the wall and then you unscrew it real quick, it'll be hot. And the reason it is is because there's two surfaces rubbing together and it's making heat. Uh, another good example is someone driving a car who does a burnout or skids across the uh, pavement, they're gonna make smoke and heat their tires up. And those are just two really simple examples of friction. Um, you know, we use that in class a lot too. You see a lot of people doing this when they get really, really cold, you know. And that's two surfaces rubbing together, right? Pretty easy. Um, and then obviously we have gravity, which is another omnipresent force, which means it is always here. We talked, about, we talked about how gravity is non-discriminant as far as its pull. Uh, we did that little experiment in class where I dropped various objects of varying masses, and they hit at the same time, right? I showed you guys the example of me and Mr. Murphy on top of the buildings jumping off. Even though I'm much more massive than Mr. Murphy, we both hit at the same time. Now, obviously, air, air resistance and aerodynamics plays a role in this as well. Um, but gravity is always here. Gravity is a force, and it definitely helps keep us on the ground, obviously. It keeps things still. It keeps things in a state of inertia. Um, it also helps slow the objects down, just like friction. But friction is the number one. Friction with those two objects rubbing together, that is the number one stoppage of objects. Gravity aids in that but it's not the number one thing, okay, friction is. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is these two forces, and they're really, really easy. Um, it's one or the other, okay, and these are forces that act together. Well, the first one is gonna be a balanced force. Now, the other one is an unbalanced force, okay, so balanced and unbalanced. Now. They're pretty easy to understand once you get the idea of what they are. Okay, so for a balance force, they are equal in size and opposite in direction. So basically, when you have a balance force, it's going to be a no movement force. Okay, if you are equal in size and opposite in direction, that means that the object you push on is pushing you back just as hard as you're pushing it. So let's go and look at this example. For example, you trying to push a train. You can't push a train. You don't have the ability, you don't have the strength, maybe the Hulk, but we know the Hulk is not real. But this is just an ordinary fella. Probably looks about the size of Mr. Murphy, and he's going up trying to push this train over. 
it's not going to happen. As hard as he's pushing that train, the train is pushing back just as hard and their forces equal out and there's no movement, okay? The same can be said about this tug of war right here. You got three men on one side, three men on the other. When they pull the rope, since they have equal strength, the rope is not going to move, okay? And same thing with this guy right here standing up against the wall, all right? She's leaning up against the wall. She's not necessarily trying to push it over, but she's leaning on it. And the ball, I mean, the ball, the wall is pushing her back at an equal way. Now, sometimes some of these might not work. So if you went up to a wall that wasn't as sturdy as this here brick wall and you went over, then that wouldn't be a balanced force anymore. Um, another great example of a balanced force would be you trying to go outside and push your house over. Now, hopefully you couldn't push your house over. If you could, we probably need to get you to move. But if you go out and you try to push your house over or flip your car over, it's not gonna happen, okay? Because as hard as you're pushing that object, that object has the ability to push back just as hard and you're never gonna be able to move it, all right? Now, let's go to the next one because the next one is very easy as well. The next one, uh-oh, is going to be an unbalanced force. Now, unbalanced forces always cause a change in motion. They are not equal and they are not opposite. Unbalanced forces basically mean that there's gonna be movement, okay? Now, there's a really easy way for you to remember this concept. The first thing that I always tell everyone when we're trying to learn these forces is to think about what the words are. So the word balanced and unbalanced. Well, think about the word balanced. If I told you to sit here and balance yourself, hey, get a good balance. Get your feet spread apart about shoulder high, you know, and, and just stand there. You're balanced. If somebody came up and tried to push you over, you'd probably stay in this position. Well, if I told you to get unbalanced and stand on one leg, right, or one foot, and start hopping up and down and juggling, well, you're gonna show a lot of movement. And that's what unbalanced forces do. Unbalanced forces show movement, okay? So let me show you an example of this. Uh, here's three examples. So I got this fella right here and um, he has gone to Walmart or Costco or somewhere and he has put, I guess, all of his children inside of this shopping cart.